You know what this reminds me of, actually? I kind of feel like a gay Mr. Rogers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> Speaking of Mr. Rogers, I'm jumping ahead a little bit in the story. But my mom, when I finally did come out to her and all that stuff, she said, I, there were two reasons I knew you were gay, right from the start. I said, great, what is it? Well, the first one was, when you started to fix your hair with a little curl, <laughs> I knew it. I said, okay, it's the other one. You were obsessed with Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Are you saying I'm gay or Mr. Rogers? <laughs> she said both. <laughs> My mother, Mr. Rogers was not gay. Yeah. Remember that mailman that used to visit? Him? <laughs> he stayed a long time. Didn't have to deliver mail. <laughs> Do you remember his name? Mr. McFeely. <laughs> My mother was right. I'll tell you, I don't know why I question her, I really don't. If it's not one thing, it's your mother. But I actually also knew I was gay right from the beginning. You know, I really did. I just didn't have a name for it, I didn't know what to call it. I just knew I felt different. And I knew that that different feeling was equated for me to bad, to broken. And I carried that around. Church was always really important to me. My Aunt Vera used to take me to Sunday Mass all the time, Transfigur Transfiguration Church in Queens in Mass. Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah, I was a good Catholic boy, you know. And sometimes we even go to Saturday Masses. Did you do that too recently? Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, what was I doing on Saturday night? Going to church. <laughs> but I really did love it. I really did. It was like, I thought, well, there was a part of me that thought, maybe I'm going to grow out of this thing, and then I'll, you know, grow into a full-grown man. I did do that, but I grew into a full-grown gay man. <laughs> but I did love the church thing. I loved the community. I loved the message, and I really loved the music. I especially loved gospel music. I mean, I soul-stirring, inspiring, you know, that, that just, um, it hits me in all the right places. And um, I have a faith, a faith in God, and that's always been my hand to hold on to. And I really thought if I just remained faithful, that everything was going to clear up, because that's what I thought had to happen. Well, later on in my life, I was probably about 19, and I was working, and I met somebody at work who also seemed to be struggling in his life at some point, and was going to a church that he said changed his life, it saved his life. I didn't realize how much we had in common at the time, but I knew that I had something in common with him. And this church sounded like a miracle, like a cure. So I decided to go to that church with him. And I loved it. They immediately took me under their wing. I was singing before I knew it in their Sunday services, I was their lead vocalist, I took over the youth choir, the children's choir, I um, even went to Wednesday night Bible study school, I loved it. And I really felt safe, and I felt like things were moving ahead in, in the right direction. Until some of the people in the church started to kind of pick up on the fact that I was gay, which was really interesting to me because I wasn't out yet. I haven't even had any gay experiences. I may have been 18 or 19, but I was much younger than my years. And they started to really mistreat me. And literally tell me to my face that I was going to hell. So all of these fears that I've had my entire life were now being brought right to me. And um, I was naive, I was young, and I wanted to be good, however I possibly could. And what was interesting is so many people in the church didn't agree with how I was being treated. They knew about it, but they remained silent because they were afraid too. And it just continued. And they told me I needed to go to therapy, which I did. They told me who to go to, I went. That's when the conversion therapy started. 
And I went through months of incredible physical and mental abuse, all under the guise of therapy. It got so bad that I just had to leave. I couldn't do it. And you think I'd be happy that I was strong enough to get out of there, but instead, it made me feel worse. It made me want to die, literally take my life, because even they couldn't help me. God, I must really be broken. And I remember sitting in my backyard, holding my dog Lady in my arms, looking up at the moon this one night, and just coming so close to ending it, really thinking in depth about what I was going to do. And in that moment, my dog kind of turned her head around, looked at me and whimpered, as if she heard what my thoughts were. And it just diffused my whole thought process. It made me realize how much this little dog needed and loved me. And that there were other people in my life that I needed and loved, and who needed and loved me. And I know it's hard for some of you out there to understand, but I felt in that moment, I felt like God changed my heart. Gave me a, a new thought process to give my life another chance. And from that day on, I did. Now, I'm not saying that my life was better because of that, because in some ways, it got much worse. But it allowed me, I don't know if it was the stamina or what, to see it through. I wanted to see my life through, and I'm really glad I did it. So I wrote this song for this album as a declaration that you can be gay and still love God. But an even more awesome and powerful thought is that you can still be gay and be loved by God. Mind blown, right? Okay? So this one is called Jesus in My Head. Sweet. 